good morning students i hope you all understood the first part of civics lesson 1 indian constitution students before entering into the lesson please note down all the points which is presented in this video then only you can revise and understand the continuity of the lesson before entering into today's portion we just recall our previous portion so in last class we saw about citizenship it is a latin word which means resident of a city state so we can get a citizenship of country by five methods by birth by descent by registration by naturalization and by incorporation of territory when we loss of citizenship means we loss vias renunciation termination and deprivation next we saw about fundamental rights there are six fundamental rights they are right to equality right to freedom right against exploitation right to religion cultural and educational rights and right to constitutional remedies in that six rights we discussed about right to constitutional remedies In Article Thirty Two, a writ is an order or command issued by a court in writing under its seal. It is in the nature of command or prohibition from performing certain acts that are specified in the order of the court. Writ is classified into five kinds: habeas corpus, mandamus, prohibition, certiorari, quo warranto. Okay, students. Let's start our today's portion. Today we are going to learn about directive principles of state policy. Directive principles of state policy. The directive principles of state policy are enumerated in Part Four of the Constitution, from Articles Thirty Six to Fifty One. the constitution does not contain any classification of directive principles these directive principles are not enforceable by court but they are fundamental for the governance of the country the government is duty bound to apply these principles while making laws they aim to promoting the social welfare of the people dr b r ambedkar described these principles as novel features of the indian constitution let's see detailed about directive principles of state policy these principles is also known as dpsp or guidelines for the framing of law by the government these principles are not enforceable by court but they are fundamental for the governance of the country the government is duty bound to apply these principles while making laws DPSP and fundamental rights form the concerns of Indian constitution. They aim to promoting the social welfare of the people, to bring social economic change in the country, to fulfill the basic needs of common man, and to reshape the structure of Indian society in direction of greater social economic equality. based on the content and direction they can be classified into socialist principle gandhian principles and liberal intellectual principles let's see one by one socialist principles equal distribution of wealth and material resources among all classes of people so as to prevent its concentration in a few hands 
equal pay for equal work for both men and women then right to work education and public assistance next gandhian principle to organize village panchayat free and compulsory education for all children below 14 years and to encourage cottage industries and to promote employment opportunities in rural areas the state shall promote education and economic interest of the weaker section and sc and st peoples prevent consumption of liquor and other intoxicating drinks and to improve agriculture and encourage animal husbandry then direct principles of state policies explained as per articles of indian constitution first social political and economic justice first article 37 while stating that the directive principles are not enforceable in any court of law declares them to be fundamental to the governance of the country and imposes an obligation on the state to apply them in matters of legislation next article 38 it directs the state to secure a social order with economic political and social justice for the promotion and welfare of the people next article 38 2 it says that state shall strive to minimize the inequalities of income status facilities and opportunities etc next principles of policy based on this article 39 it says that while framing policies state should strive to provide adequate means of livelihood equal pay for equal work resource distribution and safety of citizens and healthy development of children next free legal aid based on this article 39a says that then state will try to make legal system fair and would provide free legal aid by means of some schemes or law next organization of panchayats article 40 that state shall take steps to organize panchayat and endow them with such powers and authority as may be necessary to enable them to function as units of self government the 73rd and 74th amendments of the constitution later culminated as constitutionally back framework for this directive principles of state policy next welfare government in welfare government under article 41 provides state shall within its limit of economic capacity and development will make effective provisions for securing right to work education etc and to public assistance in case of unemployment old age sickness disablement or any other case of undeserved want the next principle is securing just human work and maternity relief under article 42 state shall make provisions for securing just and human conditions for work and for maternity relief the next principle is fair wages and decent standard of life based on this principle article 43 provides the state will endeavor to secure by suitable legislations or economic organizations or in other way to all workers agricultural industrial and otherwise work a living wage conditions of work ensuring a decent standard of life and full enjoyment of leisure 
and social cultural opportunities and in particular promote cottage industries on an individual or corporate basis in rural areas. The next principle is workers participation in management. It provides under article 43A the state shall take steps by suitable legislation or in any other way to secure the participation of workers in the management of undertaking establishments or other organizations engaged in any industry. And also, government had launched various schemes on workers' participation in PSU to fulfill their directives. Next, promotion of cooperatives. Under Article 43B, inserted by 97th Amendment Act in 2011, says that state shall endeavor to promote voluntary formation, autonomous functioning, democratic control, and professional management of the cooperative societies. Next, Uniform Civil Code. Article 44 says that the state shall endeavor to secure for the citizens a uniform civil code throughout the territory of India. The next principle is based on infant and child care. Based on this principle, Article 45 provides, State shall endeavor to provide yearly childhood care and education for all children until they complete the age of 6 years. Next is for production of SC, ST, weaker sections from exploitation. Article 46 provides, the state shall promote with special care the education and economic interest of the weaker section of the people and in particular of the scheduled caste and the scheduled tribes and shall protect them from social injustice and all forms of exploitation. Under Article 47, state shall regard the raising of the level of nutrition and the standard of living of its people and the improvement of public health. This Article 47, prohibition of the consumption except for the medicinal purposes of intoxicating drinks and of drugs which are injurious to health. Next, Scientific Agriculture and Animal Husbandry. Based on this principle, Article 48 provides State shall endeavor to organize agriculture and animal husbandry on modern and scientific lines and shall in particular take steps for preserving and improving the breeds and prohibiting the slaughter and cows calves and other milks and drop cattle. The next principle is environment and wildlife protection. Based on this principle, Article 48A provides, says that state shall endeavor to protect and improve the environment and to safeguard the forest and wildlife of the country. The next principle is production of monuments, places and objects of national importance. Based on that, Article 49 provides, state will be obliged to protect every monument or place or object of artistic or historic interest declared by or under law made by parliament to be of national importance from spoliation, disfigurement, destruction, removal, disposal and export as the case may be. Next. Separation of Judiciary from Executive 
based on that article 50 provides state shall take steps to separate the judiciary from the executive in the public services of the state next promotion of international peace and security based on that article 51 provides state shall endeavor to promote international peace and security maintain just and honorable relations between nations foster respect for international law and treaty next we will see the directive principles of state policy added by amendments of constitution four directive principles four directive principles were added by 42nd amendment that is to secure opportunities and health development of the children in the article 29 to promote equal justice and provide free legal aid to poor in article 39a to take steps to secure the participation of workers in management of organization in industries in article 43a and then last to protect and improve the environment and to safeguard the forest and animals by article 48a again i repeat the comparison Fundamental rights are derived from the constitution of the USA. Directive principles of state policy was drawn on the model of the constitution of Ireland. Fundamental rights, even the government cannot take away or abridge these rights. Directive principles are mere instruction to the government. Fundamental rights are enforceable by a court of law. But directive principles are not enforceable in any court. Fundamental rights have legal sanctions, but directive principles have moral and political sanctions. Fundamental rights strengthen political democracy in the country, but directive principle ensures social and economic democracy. Fundamental rights are natural rights. Directive principles lead to protect human rights. Next, we are going to see the fundamental duties. The fundamental duties in the Indian constitution are inspired by the constitution of former USSR. Let's see one by one what are the fundamental duties in our country. Article 51A declares it to be the duty of every citizen of India. 1. To abide by the constitution and respect its ideals and institutions, the national flag and the national anthem. 2. To cherish and follow the noble ideals which inspired our national struggle for freedom. Third duty is to uphold and protect the sovereignty, unity and integrity of India. Four, to defend the country and render national services when called upon to do so. The fifth fundamental duty is to promote Harmony and the spirit of common brotherhood among all the people of India, transcending religious, linguistic and regional or sectional diversities to renounce practices derogatory to the dignity of women. The sixth fundamental rights is to value and preserve rich heritage of our composite culture. Next, to protect and improve the natural environment including forest, 
lakes, rivers and wildlife and to have compassion of living creature. The last fundamental, to develop scientific temper, humanism and the spirit of inquiry and reform. Next fundamental rights is to safeguard public property and to abjure violence. The tenth fundamental rights is to strive towards excellence in all spheres of individual and collective activity so that the nation constantly rises to higher levels of endeavor and achievement. The last fundamental rights is to provide opportunities for education to his child or what between the age of 6 and 14 years. The 86th Constitutional Amendment Act 2002 has also introduced the 11th Fundamental Duty under 51A Article under which all citizens of India or parents shall provide opportunities for education to their children between age of 16 and 14 years. Students, I hope you all understood today's portion that is directive principles of state policy and fundamental duties of our country. Here I gave some evaluation questions. Try to answer these questions. The directive principles of state policy are enumerated in dash. Dr. B. R. Ambedkar described fundamental principles as dash of the Indian constitution. Next, write the classification of directive principles, point out the fundamental rights, Mention the difference between fundamental rights and directive principles of state policy. Thank you.